Okay, so today I'm going to be working on a full body drawing. Um, it's actually a little bit based on uh, my MC, so you'll get to see what she looks like. I've been experimenting with figure drawing um, a lot over the past couple of years, and uh, I found I really like it. I really like when it turns out well, I'm very proud of it. Um, and uh, I really like um, sort of figuring out how to express different attitudes and emotions through a person's whole body instead of just their face. This character is very lively, and so uh, I think I've come up with a pose that expresses that quite well. So if you are new to figure drawing or are kind of exploring like I've been, uh, I'm going to show you uh, kind of how I come up with poses and how I use perspective and um, foreshortening a little bit, which is very hard for me, but I've been working on it for quite a while and I'm kind of happy with my progress, so I'll show you uh, how I use those things to make a realistic sort of drawing. Um, I found that my favorite way of coming up with a pose is to start with a shape. Uh, sh uh, I think expresses that person because lately I've been, like what this person would have as their profile picture if they had one something that very much expresses them uh, in general as opposed to in a specific scene so for my main character and <laughs> she's a very lively person I decided I wanted a very spread out sort of thing so I chose an arc which I'll show you <laughs> uh, let me see like that. Okay. And um, other shapes could be like, if you want them to be standing straight, you could just have a line. If you want them to be like, uh, like one of have a line this way, with sort of like a swooshing like this type of a thing. So just whatever seems right for whoever you want to be drawing. This is what I'm starting with. So I want. In order to change this shape into a person, I have to decide what part of the shape coincides to what body part. So I've decided I want her to be in the middle of a cartwheel. Very movement oriented. So I'm going to have this be one of her legs up here. And I'm going to have for a cartwheel probably one going off this way. And then the main arc will be her body and one of her arms. So I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So you can see, I've uh, I've figured out where I want the limbs to go, and I've done <laughs> what I've uh, been practicing lately is um, using circles and lines to figure out where a limb will go, and then the size of the circles and the length of the lines to figure out my distances, and I go by joints. So like, I started with the body, and figuring out by the size of my arc I needed the body to be about this big so that the leg could reach out to here and the arm would reach down to here. Um, I usually make my bodies about about as long as my arms. It's not strictly 
uh, proportional. I just, what I was just doing was testing with my own body. Yes, my arms are longer than my body. I think in this one I made the arms a little too short because I've run out of room. But we'll see how it ends up looking in the end. I basically start by looking at the joints. I have the two hips here, and it took me a long time to learn to make the circles for the hips big enough. Um, because <laughs> it is actually a very, very big joint. Um, so you have to start with circles the size of the biggest point of that joint, like at your hips. You've got about the size of your um, cheeks there. So that's about how big you would make them. In comparison to uh, the body, you make them about that big. Um, so basically, usually they end up slightly wider than the body. Um, even if you're working with a guy, they would usually be slightly uh, wider than the body, because that's just how <laughs> most people's anatomy works. Obviously, if you're drawing different body types, you might end up with, um, you might decide you need to enlarge the hips, or uh, enlarge the body, or make a different shaped body, because this one obviously is very streamlined, very square, not a very curvy shape, even though uh, the character is a female. Let's see, what else? Um, to get to the leg shape, I usually put the knees pretty much in the middle of where I want the leg to go, and in this case I've just made a straight one, which is very simple and easy. Basically, through trial and figured out, obviously with this one, it took me a while, even though I um, have a fair amount of experience doing this, it took me a while to decide exactly how big I wanted this joint to be, so I've got a lot of lines there. And same with all of these, I put a lot of lines because I'm never quite sure right away how big I'm going to make these things, and you just fix it if you don't like it. So, uh, like with this hip, I started out a little bigger and then made it smaller because I thought that it was a little too big. Um, and so don't don't be worried about um, getting it wrong the first time. If something goes wrong, you're working in pencil, it's not a big deal. Uh, but that's just a very, very, this is all a very rough outline so to help me put in uh, more detailed lines later. So with this one, of course, I've done a uh, bended one, and the reason I've done that is because, uh, partially because it's a very movement type thing. I tend to, even though you're not really supposed to, um, bend my knee when I do a cartwheel, and I think this girl would too, just because she's having fun and playing. So she's got a bended knee, and it's bend it, bent away from uh, the perspective, which is from about here. So uh, that's going to require some foreshortening to figure out how to relate the foot to the knee, because the foot's um, in the background from the rest of her body. But that's about the only part of her body that's in the background, so, you know, it's a lot easier than it could be. Like, when you're drawing so that the whole person is tilted, like if this shoulder was in front of this shoulder, that's a lot harder. I'm, uh, I've done it a couple times, but it's very hard and very frustrating. It took me a long time to figure out how to do it, and uh, I'm not sure if I could replicate that very easily. So, um, this line is to show I, from her positioning, I'm thinking that this is the side of her leg, so this is going to be the side of her foot with her, with her toes pointing down. This one, I thought it looked like her foot would probably be pointing up. And here I've decided uh, how I want her hands, because this I want this hand to be the one she's got her weight resting on, so it's spread like this with her thumb probably this way, and her, the rest of her fingers this way. And this one I think I'm going to have like a high five, pulling up sort of hand. So I put some little lines <laughs> to indicate to my future self that that's what I wanted to do there. Okay, and then with her head, um, I usually make that uh, probably about half to a third the size of the body, depending. Uh, this one looks like ended up about about half the size, which um, feels a little big, but it doesn't look <laughs> a little big. It seems like it would be, but it's really uh, not. So, yeah, that's how I came up, uh, how I got to here from uh, my arc. So, I'm going to... Next comes the erasing of these very rough lines and replacing with uh, tighter lines. Oh, and uh, how I get from circle, circles and lines and joints to this outline is basically just from the outer bit of the big circles. I go to the outer bit of the little circles and then you've got uh, starting and big getting smaller and then 
you have kind of a little indent where each um, where each joint is because you go in a little bit and then go back out a little bit when you come out. At least that's how I do it, which um, will be there will be just a little bit of that reflected in the final product, but that's kind of how I start. So I'll, I'll start erasing the circles and inner lines and replacing them, replacing these outer lines with more sure ones that are closer to the final product, and uh, I'll be back to tell you about what I did for that in a minute. So, a few things that uh, I found kind of difficult when um, working with foreshortening uh, with one of those is it's I found it difficult to um, make the f the the distance between the foreground and the background short enough. Uh, I tend to make it kind of long, and then it just looks wrong. Like if I had had it out to here or something. <laughs> It would look really weird because it would be so small. I'll show you when I'm finished. I've got another version of this with the bent leg uh, where I have it even closer than it is now, and I think that's even a little better than this. When you, if I had her whole body turning sideways and I had like her shoulder bigger than one shoulder bigger than the other, here's one shoulder, here's the other. Um, the temptation is to make it look like. and have it be almost as wide as it would be normally, like the full width, but with foreshortening you have to sort of, since it's tilted, it's um, thinner. It's kind of hard to, basically, like, the distance between the knee and the foot here, since most of the length is going backwards, has to be a lot shorter than the distance between this knee and this foot, and sometimes it's hard to calculate exactly how much shorter. So uh, the other thing, of course, is how much bigger to make the um, the closer part of the leg than the farther part. And basically, uh, the way I do it is just trial and error and waiting until it looks right. Uh, this one I actually, <laughs> since the position is um, such that I can do so, it's far enough away from my head, I actually was able to hold up my own leg, sit back on a chair and hold up my own leg and look at it <laughs> and kind of measure how far down the knee how far down the thigh the um, this line should be the bottom of my shin. So I kind of looked at it and tried to figure out. And this looked really wrong <laughs> earlier, but then when I held up my leg to look at it from this angle, it actually um, is pretty close to correct. I thought maybe it should be a little smaller, because is that really how fat the thigh is? Uh, not the thigh, the shin coming out. Should it really be coming out from down here? Is that how big the joint is? But it actually it is pretty close. So I did have to uh, try several different lines, as you'll have seen, and you just keep going until it looks right. And uh, so those are my biggest tips: are keep going, try a bunch of different things, um, and it'll come easier as you get experience. 
and uh, don't be afraid to try different things because that's the only way you'll figure it out and also if at all possible look at your own body if you can or if you have a <laughs> willing subject find uh, a friend who you can have them stand a certain way and look, just look at them and probably possibly take a picture of them that way because then they won't have to stand still for you or you could probably search up people in different positions on the internet you know just be careful with that so anyway <laughs> um, then what else have I worked on her feet I've worked a little bit on her feet because I've worked with this position before I figured out earlier that the foot I need to show just a little bit of her foot where her, um, what's that called? There's a, it's, it's right here. What's that called? The side of your foot. It has a bone on it like this. Which I think I'll leave there because I think uh, I want her feet to be bare. But, um, so I've shown a little bit of her foot out from the side since the leg is tilted. There's a, just a little bit since the the foot is very thin. Um, there's just a little bit of her foot that you can still see side, sideways. It's not completely under her leg like it would be if I did like this. That wouldn't look right right because the foot is still three-dimensional. And you need to be able to see the side of it as well as the back and front. And also, usually the heel comes back at least enough that you can see it a little bit. So, I've made kind of a, a little disc type shape that I will refine with um, toe shapes and a little bit more, probably a little more work on the heel and things like that and figure out where her pant leg comes to and stuff like that a little later on. Uh, right, next I'm going to be working on the arm. I'll probably... Um, talk about that while I do it because that's a very um, particular process. So basically you have to know what makes up an arm. Um, on the on the top on the top part of your arm here, um, you want to know about what muscles make it up so you know what what shapes there are. Uh, with the top part of the arm there's the deltoid, which is your shoulder muscle. It's on the, um, it's on the, it's kind of on the opposite side of the way she is here. It's usually on the top part of your, opposite your armpit, armpit basically. It's, um, that big muscle that, um, is kind of like where, um, basically where a shoulder pad would be. And it comes down a little ways. It's, um, fairly long. It comes down... Mm, let me see. Almost, I'm measuring it on my own body. That's what I'm doing right now. Um, about a third of the way down the the upper part of the arm. So from since I put the elbows here with my little circles, and I kind of kind of see that with the outline indenting, that's about where the uh, upper arm ends. So from there, I mark out about a third, and about to here is going to be taken up by it, uh, and about to here would be taken up by, uh, the deltoid muscles. So, but, on this lady, since she's got her underarms facing this way, you won't actually see that. It's just, you need to know that for reference, so that you know where to put the other muscles. The other main muscles you have on your upper arms are your biceps and triceps. Uh, biceps are the lifting muscles and they, like like this, <laughs> and uh, triceps are um, basically the opposite of that motion, the extending like that. Um, so usually, uh, when I draw triceps and biceps, I just assume that you can see both a little bit. Usually, if you're drawing somebody straight on, the biceps would be inside and the triceps would be outside. So. These ones on this side curve kind of like that, like that, are the biceps. And I start them about where I decided the end of the deltoid would be. So I start them about there. And these inside things are the biceps. 
and then curving around the outside, you have a little bit of a tricep. Also coming about to where the deltoid is. Now that you know where the mu you know about what shape the out the outside of your arms want to be, and sometimes you also leave a little bit of the inside to show kind of the definition of the person's arms, um, very much depending on how muscly you want your character to be. Like this um, character, she's not very uh, muscular. Some of my other female characters are very muscular, but this particular one, she uh, mostly uses magic, so she doesn't work out very much. She's a little, a little bit lazy, actually. <laughs> um, but she likes to obviously play around like this, but not in a workout kind of way, just in a as much as I like to for fun kind of way, which doesn't build very muscles, I can tell you. Um, so, that's for her upper arm muscles. Now, the lower arm muscles have uh, significantly less defined, but very uh, similar mus muscles going on, usually a little bit one to each side, which I'm not sure of the names of right now, but however you make them, however, <laughs> whatever the names are, uh, they're usually smaller than the, um, than the biceps and triceps, because they just move your wrists as opposed to your whole arm, so they, um, they don't need to be as powerful, so they're not as big. Uh, she looks very muscly right here, so I'm going to make them a little bit smaller, especially this one is particularly uh, bouncy. It's not <laughs> bouncy, it's particularly protruding, so I'm going to make it slighter. And one way you can, um, you can make um, muscle shapes without them being big is to have them sort of overlap a little bit. Like here, I'm, I think I'll leave not quite that much, but um, if you leave them so they don't just completely meet and then go on, if you have this little overhanging line here, that shows that there's curving but it's not like pushing out from the arm too much, and there f that way it looks smaller, but you can see that it's there. This one I'm going to move in also a little bit, make it a little flatter, but still, again, I'm leaving the very edges indented so that you can see that there's some curving there. And I might make the deltoid a little bit more defined here since she's uh, using it to hold herself up. And uh, that's another thing. If you're showing your characters using their muscles, they might be more like, you know, flexing. So you're going to be able to see them more. Just very slight ones on the lower arm, especially with this character. And at the elbow, um, as you can see, <laughs> like on my elbow, which is probably really dark, um, but you can see um, a little bit of an indent, a little bit of a line, which sometimes if you're drawing bare arms, you might put in. It'll really depend on your lighting and how detailed you want to be. Oof, that's a little too big of a tricep. I'm going to make that smaller. Um, yeah, that's a little better. Oof. Anyway, basically, with these, just the same as with anything else, you know, do it again and again until you think it looks right. Uh -oh. About there, a little bit of an indent. And then I don't have to work very hard on the um, deltoids right now because I think I'm going to put kind of swooshy um, clothes on her, which if you put swooshy, arm, swooshy clothes on your characters, you don't have to be quite as precise for the very specific outlines, but you very precise for like the major things, like how far it is from her knee to her um, thigh, but you wouldn't have to have it be curved exactly the way you want because you're going to cover up the clothes anyway. So, um, but for me, when I was just learning how to do this, I like to practice by doing um, very precise bodily outlines, no matter what kind of clothes I was going to do it on, because I was kind of exploring and figuring out how to draw bodies in the first place, and when you're practicing to try to get better, you want to um, work as much as you can 
even if uh, it's a little more work than and even if you're going to erase what you've done, which is sometimes discouraging, uh, it's still good practice. So, uh, yes, I think I need to find this. So I'll get back to you in a little bit. So now I'm going to start working, uh, I've kind of started working on her hands. So uh, I'll preface by saying I'm not really great at hands, um, but I'm learning and I'll tell you what I've learned so far and a couple of the methods I'm using. So uh, with this one, this one, this hand is going to be a little bit easier to draw because uh, I'm not doing all the fingers, I'm only doing a couple and it's very, um, it's very simple and in this context, usually it doesn't matter if uh, you get everything perfect. So I've started with a curve because I want my want her um, hand to be stretched like that, basically. So I'm going to be drawing her thumb and just the profile of her hand, and not having to draw all all the other fingers. So let's see how that works. <laughs> that for now I'm going to one and basically what I've done is drawn out uh, with just lines where I want to put the fingers because often I found a problem uh, with my drawing hands is making sure that I evenly space them all and that I leave enough space so that um, I can fit the correct number of fingers onto the hand. Uh, and then another thing I've found I have problems with is making sure the palm is big enough so I've kind of spaced out um, so that I leave space for the palm here. So now I'm going to see what I can do with it. Once again, I feel like the palm is a little too small, so I'm just going to add a little bit there. And then here I've put a little um, bit of texture where, as you can see on a hand, you can kind of, there's a little bit of a shadow where it comes in, so I've left that on there. And then I might draw some, some, uh, think some lines across the palm. Oops. Like the little thumb thing and maybe a little bit of that, but not too much because we're not very close to her, so we're not going to see a lot of lines of the hand, just a little bit for definition. Uh, yeah, so that's how I draw a hand. I'd love to know uh, if any of you have uh, strategies for hand drawing that are great. Uh, please comment below and share them with us. That's something... Uh, a lot of people struggle with, so that would be lovely. And now, I think it's time for the feet. I know what the problem is. I'm drawing them on the wrong side. <laughs> this is the side of the big toe. There you go. Every once in a while, just check yourself to make sure you've got your anatomy correct. There we go. That looks so much better. Just one little thing can make your drawing look so much more realistic. One little anatomical detail like that. There you go. Okay. 
that. I'm relatively happy with considering the distance. I don't think it needs to be any more detailed than that. This one, uh, it's a little more important to get the, the details right, as it's very much a prominent part of this picture. Uh, her whole f leg there is a very prominent part of how I've designed her, um, her pose here, so there's going to be a lot of um, attention directed towards this foot because of the lines of the picture, so I have to work and put more detail on that. That's another thing you can do. If you're something you're bad at drawing and you <laughs> would feel more confident if you didn't think people were paying attention to it, attention to it, um, you can work your painting so that or your drawing or whatever you're doing so that uh, the lines and things don't attract attention to that area of, of your drawing's body. <sighs> and um, that's one other solution besides uh, just drawing people with their hands behind their backs, things like that. Like for these, um, there's the lines, because they're very directed to the outer parts of the body, uh, the the hands here are have some attention directed at them, but I don't think quite as much for this one. They aren't really as prominent as the head and the this foot out here. So since I'm not confident about my hands, uh, that's a good thing for me. Uh, at least for right now, because I am drawing them and getting the practice in, but I'm not like uh, <laughs> putting them out on show where everyone can see the things that I don't like particularly. Which, of course, um, you can do if uh, you want to. Uh, there's nothing wrong with showing people your art that you don't think is perfect, because no art's perfect. But uh, that's just, if it makes you feel more comfortable sharing your art at all, there are ways that you can. Um... So I think I'm going to leave it here today. Um, but if you are interested in how I draw the clothes and add colors and things, uh, feel free to come back and see the next video. I think I'll probably, I might do a different video in between this one and the continuation, but at least one of the next two videos should be uh, the completion of this piece. Um, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, hope uh, this might have been helpful to you if you're having difficulty drawing figures. Um, I had I ha had quite a lot of fun designing this the first time and also going over it again, reminding myself uh, what I liked about this pose and how much um, I just really like um, the whole thing with this, uh, the emotion and the excitement. I like that about this piece. So uh, if you enjoyed, give a thumbs up. Uh, I'd love to have your comments on anything, anything you liked, anything uh, you thought would be... Uh, different, any different techniques that you use to draw figures, and um, anything like that. So, uh, subscribe if you would like uh, to know about my future videos, including the continuation of this piece, and uh, have a lovely week. Bye!